Uh, my name is Chad Mills, and I'm, uh, I'm from the U.S. I'm a digital library architect at Rutgers University in New Jersey, and um, I work with an institutional repository there called RU Core. Uh, I'm serving as the information architect and application developer for the RU Analytic Video Analysis Tool. Uh, this project began in early 2009 with a grant from the National Science Foundation. The purpose of the grant was to create a video research repository. The Video Mosaic Collaborative, or VMC, is designed to allow teachers, teacher educators, researchers, the ability to analyze and utilize a collection of real classroom video and to make new discoveries in math education, transform mathematics research, teaching, and learning. The first major collection of the VMC is a collection of videos from the Robert B. Davis Institute for Learning. The video collection is part of a 20-year longitudinal study of math education ranging from grades K through 12. This collection is also rare because the researchers obtained rights from parents to distribute the videos of their children freely for research and educational purposes. The Institute has amassed over 3,000 hours of video, which were primarily stored on VHS tapes. The videos were not being preserved and were rapidly deteriorating. Also, there was no system in place to organize the collection's information, leaving its users depending heavily on institutional memory for access and retrieval. So the VMC has been designed to serve four distinct user communities. Researchers and graduate students access the video collection and perform research, which is used for dissertation and peer-reviewed journal articles <coughs> and books. Teacher educators have been using the VMC to influence teacher beliefs on how students effectively learn and understand mathematics concepts. Teachers access the VMC to develop new understandings of math education and develop new teaching methods. Students can access the VMC for direct learning by viewing examples across a, a range of math strands. There's a tension, everybody's pulling in a different direction on this project. We began the requirements building phase of the VMC by performing an ethnographic study on how researchers and teacher educators were performing math education video analysis. We focused on the video editing process and began to explore the feasibility of developing an application on top of our repository infrastructure <coughs> that could provide simple video annotations. To do this, we sat in on, an, on educator sessions, observing the communication and interactions between teachers and educators. Also, during one incredibly cold visit to the University of Wisconsin, we observed researchers using a variety of video editing tools, platforms, taxonomy, and vocabulary builders. Don't go to Wisconsin in January. It's not fun. <laughs> we, were, we were fortunate enough to visit two grade schools in New Jersey and observe teaching and learning in math classes. There we were able to see the application of math strategies developed using the video collection. While performing the ethnographic study, we depended heavily on think aloud protocols and observational techniques to develop our conclusions and tool requirements for the project. Uh, we examined the user's workflow processes and it showed that several, it showed oftentimes several software solutions were used throughout the video analysis process. The use of the suite of applications made up of unit taskers seemed to be the norm amongst researchers and teacher educators. <coughs> We also found, what, found while analyzing video, researchers and teacher educators communicated frequently. They did this in face-to-face -face meetings that were difficult to schedule. Most, if not all, research output and instructional discovery we observed was collaborative. We concluded that without a strong collaborative element in our video analysis tool, it would not bring much value to the project. They couldn't communicate in forms other than email and meeting that was really pointless to do this. So we started implementing implementation by creating a comparative matrix and attempted to match up our core needs against a list of available tools. Simple online video annotation and playlist creation was a must. We also, also keeping the data generated from the analyses in an open, portable, non-proprietary format was a necessity. We were unable to find an existing tool or framework that, could, that we felt we could build on, so we began developing a tool of our own. We started architecting the tool by separating the UI development from the infrastructure development, keeping them independent of each other. The user interface developer could work with little to no knowledge of the back end, and this allowed the back end developer to make radical changes to the underlying system without disrupting UI development. We accomplished this by developing a set of RESTful microservices that were used to simplify user interface orchestrations with the back end. The microservices mostly communicate using XML or JSON, and it's up to the UI's discretion which technology to use. The user interface simply orchestrates a set of over 20 abstracted microservices that have been developed. Some microservices for the tool include real-time generation of video thumbnails at given time codes, 
searching the video collection, retrieval and playback of the video, saving, editing, and deleting of analytics, viewing of items in the workspace, and collaboration capabilities. Actual analytic information is stored in an XML document, leaving it non-proprietary. The document stores textual data, time codes, and IDs of the portions of the videos that were used during the analysis. Storing the information in XML makes it extremely portable and easily shared. The XML schema is, an XML schema has been developed to improve on the portability and hopeful future interoperability of analytics with other systems. And once an analytic is reviewed and approved, it can be published into our institutional repository. We ingest the, the XML document and simple metadata about the analytic. We also use RELSX functionality in Fedora to relate the analytic with the videos that were used. And this is the beginning of a network of resources for us. For collaboration, we initially developed two main options for our users. One option allows users to share and co-create analytics with others. Throughout the co-authoring of the analytic, all individual contributions are tracked and reported as events and metadata, and later invested during the publishing. Alternatively, users can share analytic with colleagues who do not have an account with the tool. This is accomplished by, ge by generating a simple URL that directs you to a public viewer. The URLs expire after a predefined period of time defined by the person who, who created the analytic. Finally, for the open source community, we plan on creating a GitHub repository and having an open source release of our microservices layer and a uh, touch compatible HTML5 UI orchestration layer in the spring. The software will be re released under GPL version 3 and the microservices layer will be uh, repository independent and easily extendable. So that's all I have. Thank you very much.